Hello and welcome again to the Blueprint of the Universe series where we're looking at our sacred history and today we are looking at one of the apostles of Saint Philip. Now Saint Philip was described as a man alone and that he at one point or another had um, a sole mission unlike that of uh, others and went on his own instead of in pairs like the rest of the apostles. Um, he expanded his teachings over in Greece and Syria and was requested by Peter to come and rejoin the other apostles at the Mount of Olives. Uh, the reason for this was unknown um, until the, this present day, unfortunately. Now, Philip often gets confused with Philip the Evangelist, um, but these two are very separate people. Now, this Philip uh, is accredited with high levels of healing powers and performs some of the smaller, smaller miracles that uh, supposedly Jesus or King Jesus was supposed to have done himself, um, such as healing uh, and other other magical things. He was said to be a magical individual and to practice rituals and magic and a lot of the stuff that um, uh, the Gnostics would do in the future. He's also one of the primary teachers of Simon Magus who we will see later on who continues on the line. And this to me indicates that he had a deeper understanding of the spiritual side of the universe. That's why he went alone because um, he, he was different to the other apostles. He had a better understanding of some of the other um, uh, deeper practices and meanings and he was obviously held in high regard which is why he was summoned back to the Mount of Olives which is when the Jewish revolt was started uh, and he gave uh, Jesus gave his speech to uh, to begin the revolt um, now it's interesting enough as well that Saint Philip was considered uh, a magician and a mage because we've already seen those practices again passed on by um, John the Baptist so he is kind of a middle link now and it just shows because we we know for a fact that all the apostles were given something different uh, according to their personality type just as Moses did with the leaders of the tribes of Israel each leader or tribe was um, kind of separated into their personality traits to better fulfill certain roles in society um, and it's not different here the 12 apostles were given 12 different roles now Saint Philip was obviously the, the one that had the most spiritual power the most understanding of that side of things and copied Jesus himself like I say with many of the miracles and the magic and the higher levels of, of um, practices and performances and so that's why it's quite important because even though we have people like Saint John that were supposed to have a high level of knowledge it was Saint Philip that was clearly able to put them into practice and um, uh, manifest them in ways better than the others and it's potentially that's why he went alone as we mentioned because you know, the others weren't really akin to his methods and he had to he, he was told to go off and, and do his own thing because one he was capable of doing that but two the others may not have understand the methods in which he used to practice and portray some of the things he was given um, so it's quite an interesting figure and again it's important to mention because he, he will be the primary teacher of Simon Magus who is the primary line holder for the next um, passing of the Gnostic system and uh, will create the Cephians later and it's said to be his one of his inner circle um, disciples so Philip is kind of he plays a role of the shaman in fact because although he's part of the 12 he's not as involved as, as the 12 he kind of sits on the outside has all this ability sees things from afar but equally gets involved when he needs to and that's the shamanic concept the principle so he, he holds this ideal in quite a high position um, and he plays the role of a traditional shaman practitioner um, as we've mentioned in so many of the videos if you look at my shamanic series that is one of the roles that they have is they are the black sheep in effect they sit on the outside of the village they watch what happens in the village from afar look from the outside as well so have an outside point as perspective and then they get involved when they need to to create change to guide them in the right direction with knowledge above but equally they are separate so they have a responsibility or a burden of not being um, directly involved in the social groups uh, as such because that's that's part of their practice um, and this is also seen in the prophet line, the prophets of Mount Carmel and the prophets of um, the house of David, they were always on the outskirts, they always lived outside of the city and then appeared when needed, but went back and continued the line of development in their own way, in their own practices, and then jumped in as required uh, when aid was required by the kings. And I believe that is what the role of Saint Philip is, and he quite possibly is the one that was picked to 
continue the prophet line side and we have St. Peter who was the uh, priest side of the line um, and then we have obviously the king line itself in the centre and it's interesting that, that the prophet side and obviously St. Philip passed on to St. Megas who would become also the new prophet line uh, outside of the church which would be the, the priest line as such and then you had the royal line so it's quite important really it, it dictates a very um, uh, key bridge of transition between these individuals at this time. So if you've enjoyed, please like, subscribe, and share, and we'll see you next time on the next video. Uh, but for now, take care and goodbye. Hello and welcome again to the Blueprint of the Universe series where we're looking at our sacred history and today we are looking at one of the apostles of Saint Philip. Now Saint Philip was described as a man alone and that he at one point or another had um, a sole mission unlike that of uh, other, others and went on his own instead of in pairs like the rest of the apostles. Um, he expanded his teachings over in Greece and Syria and was re requested by Peter to come and rejoin the other apostles at the Mount of Olives. Uh, the reason for this was unknown um, until the, this present day, unfortunately. Now, Philip often gets confused with Philip the Evangelist, um, but these two are very separate people. Now, this Philip uh, is accredited with high levels of healing powers and performs some of the smaller, smaller miracles that uh, supposedly Jesus or King Jesus was supposed to have done himself, um, such as healing uh, and other other magical things. He was said to be a magical individual and to practice rituals and magic and a lot of the stuff that um, uh, the Gnostics would do in the future. He's also one of the primary teachers of Simon Magus, who we will see later on, who continues on the line. And this to me indicates that he had a deeper understanding of the spiritual side of the universe. That's why he went alone.